Thank you everyone for, for having me here. So, sorry for speaking English, but I can speak better than that. Uh, that's a really great location, and I'm very excited to talk about the latest uh, developments in Bitcoin. I'm not the author of this thing, I'm just speaking about it. Uh, so, before we start, I'd like to ask just a couple of questions about, about the audience. How many of you know about Bitcoin? Okay. How many of you know about block size? <laughs> Great. So, how many of you know about this thing? Oh, not bad. Uh, perfect. So, um, let me start with just a little bit of background of what we're trying to solve with the, uh, in the Bitcoin, what we all debate is all about. And then we'll go into a little bit more technical details of how we're going to solve the problem. So uh, people ask, how do we scale Bitcoin? And the first question that comes to my mind is, what do you actually mean by scale Apparently there are different uh, ideas that people have. So what I put into this is, uh, obviously more users, more transactions, more stuff. But also thinking about more interesting use cases throughout Bitcoin, not just, just sending money from point A to point B, but also maybe some more interesting product also very useful, very helpful for the sort of universe for the relations as well. And uh, also more security because Bitcoin's value is the security that it provides, right? So it's not just a product that moves right from one location to another, it's the, the most secure system of holding and transmitting money. And so now we want to scale it, let's also think about how we make it more secure than and if we include more use cases, make those more secure than any close competitor. <coughs> and so, uh, the most attention is uh, spent towards the unfortunate block size limit. And so some people say, just let's raise the block size limit. Because you know there is one megabyte limit on the blocks that arrange transactions and every 10 minutes and time stamp on the blockchain. And so essentially we have just one megabyte of data that can be processed per 10 minutes. So why is this limit chosen? Why can we just read it? Okay. Uh, so there are multiple problems with that. I will just show you a few of them. So you just understand that it's just not so easy to design. So first of all, uh, how many of you know what is this four letter combination? Okay. Alright, so uh, first thing to know is that in the Bitcoin network, every node validates transactions. And to validate transactions, they keep so called UTXO set, which means unspent transaction out. In other words, unspent coins. So to prevent double spending, every node keeps track of what coins are spendable. So when a new transaction comes in, they check that it's actually spent those coins that can be spent. And this set, so it's slowly growing. This is not the same size as the like, full blockchain size, but it's still quite big. Today it's around 1 gigabyte size. And preferably it should be kept in memory because you want to validate transactions very quickly against those some spend coins. So whenever you spend a coin, you remove it from there, and then you create a new output or a new destination that you add it there. So if you have a transaction with one input, one output, then it also that doesn't grow. If you have one input and two outputs, Suddenly, you can source that to uh, slightly bigger in size. And it will obviously grow together with the user base. So the more people you have, the more unspent coins they will have. Each person has at least one unspent output. And so the problem is that if you just increase capacity right away, then the XO will also increase. And when it doesn't keep them in a fast memory, validation becomes slower, validation costs grow. And what it means is that if you have a bunch of light plants mobile phones that don't really validate transactions. With all the capacity that they fill with their transactions, they can push out or make it much more costlier for other full nodes that were just perfectly fine with their transactions. They can just keep up with this global YouTube so on their memory. So essentially just a bunch of like mobile phones can make Bitcoin just more centralized. So less computers and more powerful computers can actually cause this validation. This is just like another one of the problems. Uh, another problem is that there are some bugs in the, in the current implementation. One of them is the quadratic 
uh, hashing of the big transactions with many inputs. So that so today, if you create a transaction that fills the entire block, one megabyte, then it can take up to 30 seconds to validate because of this unfortunate algorithm that hashes it for checking the signatures. But it could be better. And if you raise the block limit to 2 megabytes, suddenly those 30 seconds transform into 2 minutes of time. So you can just block 20% 20, 20 of the throughput just by creating this massive transaction. And some people say, well, just, just put another limit there. And we just reintroduce the same problem. We have another card limit, like how we will solve it in the future. And maybe some use cases actually want big transactions. Imagine some crowdfunding process where we have maybe, I don't know, thousands of inputs. Why is, should it be valid? Right? So we should be careful about these things. And uh, third, it's like not a problem per se, but uh, something to consider. We have to go through the trouble of just bumping this block limit and <coughs> making the consensus of what's the right limit, etc. But we don't get much out of it. This, for instance, doesn't solve transaction mutability, which means that somebody can just read the signatures and completely mutate the transaction hash before it's committed and break the uh, chains of unconfirmed transactions using some other protocols. It doesn't help in any way to like with clients like SCP clients or some hardware wallets. And uh, it doesn't have any ability to extend it in this new way to find the future. So it's pretty dumb to think that we have to spend a lot of time on the debate and we don't get much. <coughs> and so the other problem here is that in Bitcoin we no longer have some low hanging fruit in terms of uh, nice useful extensions. So very useful stuff was done in the past, like payment free cash, or uh, direct to the basic wallets, or payment protocol, or recently some ability to do some metadata in isolated transactions, or very recent one check block time verify that allows you to have the block time right in the scripts on the chain. So all these things are relatively easy to implement. They are not very controversial. And we're running out of those easy things to do in Bitcoin. Uh, for, for the next steps, we need to do big improvements, and those big improvements do just kind of manifest. We need to be careful with the design, really careful. We need to plan and look for the future, how it will, how it will scale next year, next five years, next ten years. And then when we come up with a solution, we should be very responsible for deploying this to people to avoid any kind of breakage. And even some simple things before we're putting some sort of reports in the level of minor Minus doing the information properly or just having some nasty little bug in, in the database like in the fourth 2013. So that's a minor version of the actually fourth method in two parts. We have to be really careful about this. And one of the examples of how it's being done, for instance by the Bitcoin Fortune, is this library called LeapSec P256K. So what is that? So uh, Right now, Bitcoin uses the uh, uh, electric curve signatures to authorize transactions. And for years, it was using OpenSSL library uh, to implement OpenSSL electric curve signatures. But OpenSSL is pretty, uh, uh, well, it's pretty complicated code base, code base is not the perfect one. And so a couple of people namely Peter Ruby and Gregory Maxwell, they spent three years trying to optimize all the cryptographic code necessary for Bitcoin to make it faster, safer, uh, more efficient in like, any possible direction. And they created a piece of code specifically for Bitcoin. And uh, so they have tremendous speed up, which is great for we can pop in sort of fast. It comes to really signatures sometimes faster. And I guess this is coming up in the consensus logic actually which is creates features in one. In the upcoming version will like pop up few views. So very soon we will get this speed up everywhere. And this took a lot of amount of work, a lot of engineering. And um, just to repeat myself, like scaling doesn't just mean more transactions. You need to fix security bugs. Commons bug before we just raise the fast. And then we want to actually look at the wider range of applications that have different um, points on the spectrum between the um, 
security and security. Right? So we can look, we can do more transactions in the blockchain, but then there will be like ten times more people who want to do something on the blockchain that can tolerate a little bit less security. And we have to afford them some features that allow them to get as much security as possible without like, the blockchain all over. So uh, finally we need to figure out how to deploy this stuff and you probably heard about hard forks, soft forks. So this is a short version. Hard forks, bad. Because risky to deploy, really bad precedent politically. Like, investors don't really invest in a system that can be really easily changed left or right. They want to invest in something robust that like, works, and when it doesn't work, it has some obvious fixes that are not breaking things for those people who are really not sure or disagree. And hard force and fake users not be able to opt out of the change. They just put that for everyone. And so maybe like one year down the line, you cannot do this. So soft force on that and much easier. So how many of you need kind of clarification of the for the hard force and soft force? Okay, so uh, yeah, very good. So hard force means just everyone upgrades the software to use whatever they might do. For instance, you want to increase the number of Bitcoins in circulation. If everyone agrees, they have upgraded some sort of time, and then if everyone upgraded and everyone is in sync, nothing's broken. Uh, soft force only require miners to add new constraints that were not before. So they're kind of backwards compatible with all the rest of the users. So, for instance, uh, if you create a new script that was useless before because it allows, allowed anyone to spend it, if miners interpret it differently, say, okay, this script will have some specific meaning. And if miners, the supermajority of them, enforce this new rule, then it's becoming safe for people to use this new feature, and they can slowly adopt it. For instance, all these features that I uh, showed before, like pages to cache or check on time verify, they're all soft words. You don't need to use them, you don't need to validate them up front, but they're there, they're enforced by miners, and if you want to use them, you just upgrade the software and start doing some great applications. Yes. So these are the standards. This is the patch. This is the kind uh, of uh, maintenance update that requires blocks to announce their version on a more strict manner. And this is check all time very fine. And all all of them were deployed very smoothly and worked great. And another important thing is that users can opt out of those things. So imagine if miners just propose one. Here's a new feature, you can use it. And nobody uses it. Nothing changed. No extra costs, no security vulnerabilities, nothing. So miners can enforce the thing, but nobody creates transactions using this feature. So users can effectively opt out. And if uh, the feature has some cost, then some users can uh, ignore it and have like slightly less security. They just will trust miners to validate it and require any more information for such transactions. But there is a kind of spectrum of choices. Not so really hard for them. So this brings us to actually what what is segregated units or separate? <coughs> so segregate is uh, a whole package of measures that solves a bunch of problems. Uh, and maybe like lays foundation for the future of energy. So first of all, it smartly actually scales Bitcoin <coughs> to allow more super more transactions. Well not ten times more but quite enough for 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 a while. Also it has some very smart security improvements. And we'll talk about it. And by doing those two things, it doesn't really care for a range of applications. The whole range of things can be more secure, more more performant or even possible, but have nothing to do with just doing transactions in the blockchain. And uh, all of this together just kind of lays a nice foundation for next steps and also kind of educates us what is possible in Bitcoin. What can we do similar to this uh, upgrade for some future? Uh, uh, so, does this make sense? Super. Great. So, uh, let's go into a little bit more detail how to read it. This addresses some of the concerns that I just played. Uh, so, this is the Bitcoin transaction. So, every Bitcoin transaction has inputs and outputs. And uh, inputs, they re reference previous transaction outputs, and the outputs declare conditions. Uh, for additions and rules, how the output can expand by the next transaction. 
And so here we spent three inputs and we break the funds to two hours. So we specify amounts and the we move to them. And on the inputs we have wrappers and the optimization solution. But what's interesting about this picture is that on these two parts, the uh, references and the inputs and the whole outputs, they actually define the meaning of transaction. Like, this is what transaction does. And signatures, they don't change the meaning of the transaction. They only authorize it. And what's more important is that you know, for every the possibly millions of possible valid signatures. And we as users, we don't care which one is used. Like signature creators can plug any signature they want, as long as it's valid. And but it causes some problems to what we talk about. So signature just witnesses that there is this proof that it's actually valid, but doesn't doesn't verify the actual content of the transaction. And also here Outputs they actually put the UDS on sense. The more outputs you have and the less inputs you have, the more you grow the UDS on. And conversely, the more inputs you have and the less outputs you have, the more you shrink the UDS on. So if whatever the input we allow in the Bitcoin uh, leads to dramatic increase of the number of outputs, then we have a dramatic increase in the UDS on side and, and the motivation cost. And um, one more thing. So every transaction is identified as cryptographic hash. And unfortunately, historically, this cryptographic hash covers the whole transaction. And uh, it also covers signatures. And as I mentioned previously, signatures, they can be modified. And recently, we had some problems when you submit transaction to that with somebody, somebody else, the author of the transaction, modifies the bits of the signature. It's still it's still wet, but the, the transaction has completely different. So if you have a chain of transactions, not confirmed it in the block, but committed in the block. And the first transaction is mutated to the signature and breaks the transaction ID and gets committed to different, slightly different copy, then all the remaining transactions become immediately invalid because they reference the previous transaction ID that no one is coming with. So this is the problem. So segregated witness starts with this idea of segregation of the signatures out of the transaction so we can use this mutability of transaction ID. And then there are a lot of cool things that follow from that. So let's just move signatures out. What does it mean? Let's say, let's have a legacy <coughs> signatures empty. So there is no possibility to mutate transaction ID. And move actual signatures on a separate data structure that we will call transaction witness. You can just create a new data structure, move them out, and create a consensus rule that signatures must be up here and can be, uh, should be provided in a separate data structure. And then we'll have now not one but two transaction hashes. One will be the legacy one, which becomes normalized in that it's uh, not mutatable, uh, which will be used by transactions in all the ones, and will also be committed on the, the blockchain. But we also will have a witness hash that contains the signatures. And only the witness hash is only committed on the blockchain as well, but not used by the transactions. So whatever we do with the chains of transactions, they are not by this, but the miners have to commit to the valid witness hash so that everyone sees the data the transactions. So how do we go about making the code about breaking things? So today, we have all this black stuff. So we have the block, block header, and all the transactions, they are organized in a tree and committed as a so-called virtual tree. And the root of this tree, which is a good graphic hash, is written in the block header. This was what we have to do. So what we could do is to just put this with the stuff right there on the side, but this would break the existing consensus rules. This would be hard for, and this would be like really incompatible with all the existing requirements. So instead, we achieve the same security, the same, uh, same logic, but just putting the, all the witnesses <coughs> in the tree and committing to the Coinbase transaction that might have Coinbase is a transaction that has nothing to do with the company Coinbase. It creates new Bitcoins and collects all the fees that the Coinbase is controlled, controlled by the miner. All, all the main transactions controlled by the users. So 
This is how we can read to the opener. So we have what in the blockchain we still have all the signatures, even though we don't have signatures here. And what's interesting about it is that this part suddenly becomes 60% smaller. So we don't change the maximum block size, which would be hard work. Suddenly all those transactions that are counted against this one megabyte limit, they suddenly shrink by 60%. And this data structure is like, transmitted and stored as a completely separate protocol layer that has nothing to do with the one. And uh, due to the fact that signatures are already like, some times faster to validate, there is a convenient 75% discount on this data. So you still cannot like, spam blockchain with gigabytes of signature data. They're still counted against the limit, but they discounted by 75%. What it means is that we take the transaction and its witness, and all the bytes of the transaction count against the limit one to one, but only every four bytes of the signature counts as a single byte against the limit. So overall, this instruction allows us to feed in twice as many, almost twice as many transactions, provided every transaction uses the upgraded segregated witness instruction. Of course, if all transactions still use the old structure, no capacity increase happens. So uh, capacity is being increased as, as long as more people, more transactions use the new feature. <coughs> and another like, interesting side effect here is that if you see the, because of this discount, uh, the security upgrades, let's say you transition from one signature to multi signature, let's say you just one, public key to two out of three uh, multi signature. This has a discount versus increasing the UTXO size. size. So we, just, we don't just simply increase the capacity, but you have to pay more for increasing the UTXO size versus increasing your own security. So security is being cheaper to increase than uh, to increase the burden on all the data. So now the question is like, is it like clear so far? I, I can go back to the future. Okay. So how do you use this new stuff? Uh, so to actually make sense of those messages, we have to use new uh, script versions. So how to work? So uh, for the old nodes, it will look like just the script that doesn't have any operator that verifies any condition, like check signature, or check multi-signature, or check some condition. It will look just push some data on the stack and do nothing. So what this means is that uh, all node will see some like regular script which says check signature and check the signature. But then we'll see this new script which says push data. And we'll push data and then whoever wants to spend it will do it because there's no check secure, there's no check policy, there's no condition of no 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 rules to actually verify the value of spending to any of this stuff. This is what the old node is using. But what the new node see is that all the old scripts they learn to print exactly as it were. And the signatures should be provided in their old location, like here, so it's back to the one. But they now actually interpret the data that is pushed on the stack in a specific manner. And they take the first byte and say, this is the version of this data. It could be 0, 1, 2, up to 255. And then the rest of the bytes will be some script content. And what they will do, they will take the version and according to the version, interpret the script. So if the version is zero, they will just treat the rest of the script as a usual legacy script. But they will look at the signatures not in the usual location, but in the witness data. So this new node will require to minor or any node that the waste was actually give them this orange box with witness data with signatures and interpret the script and check all the signatures against the data in the witness object. And what's very cool is that if the version is not known, the, no, they will behave just like existing old nodes. They will allow anyone to spend. This means that in the future we can introduce new versions of the script that do completely different things and enforce new rules being compatible with the old existing nodes. So it has this compatibility layer for And so uh, existing segregated witness proposal has two script versions so, so far. So version zero is normal script. The version one is a very compact uh, hash of the script. 
So the actual script has to be provided in the witness. This actually improvement of the paper script hash because it has the longer uh, hash value it prevents latent collisions. So it's just like improved security for people who have complicated scripts and hide them behind the hash. So the output is combat, but the actual logic of the, uh, of the smart contract is included in the witness. And version 2 and, uh, and 3, etc., they, they're currently unassigned and treated as anyone gets back and discouraged from being used by my language or anyone. So, so in the future, we're going to use some extra features. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that, uh, first of all, we're not limited by not operators that we're used to, to introduce some of the features like check block time or five. Nops are not very like, nice to use because they, uh, they require to like, drop data from the stack and they, uh, they just tell them. And in the existing version, we can do anything. We can put the Ethereum to the output script. Uh, second, uh, these new scripts, they use a different algorithm for hashing the transaction for signature application that completely fixes this quadratic performance. Problem. So whoever actually wants to take advantage of the extra capacity and use the segregated witness outputs like this, as a side effect, they will uh, be safe to use big transactions with low validation costs. Right? So we not simply increasing capacity. We say that if you want more capacity, you have to use the new algorithm that is more efficient. And uh, one extra thing is that this signature hash also covers not, not only the inputs and outputs of the transaction, but also the amount from the spent outputs. This means that you can send the transaction to sign into your hardware wallet or HSM or to some kind of underground broker that does the signing according to some rules. And they uh, don't need any extra data to verify that they are only signing off like 100 bucks worth of money. Not more, not less. And miners and like every other node will validate that the amount actually corresponds to the but so you just kind of scale Bitcoin in places that have nothing to do with blockchain. You kind of reduce the amount of data and the amount of complexity you need to verify transactions in some specialized uh, machines. So I will just go through some short summary of what it gives us, and then there will be questions and answers, and I could maybe want to uh, answer all the questions. Right? So what does this segregated witness give us? So we have almost two times transaction to boot once every one upgrades. It fixes the performance bug. It fixes the transaction immutability that allows uh, things like Lightning Network or other source of payment protocols that uh, use blockchain only as a core, meaning that we commit to the blockchain and pay money fees and like, spend the, the space in the blockchain only when things go bad. So as long as players are to play, uh, playing well correctly, then we could have this chain of transactions in the air, not in the air, uh, using blockchain only as a like, protection layer. And so this mutability uh, of the transactions is very, uh, very nasty for this kind of protocol. So it's fixed here. And um, what's more interesting is that for the SP clients, the, the simplified verification that only rely on the miners uh, elevation, but they don't check the signatures themselves. It means just two times lower better, right? So you don't have to transmit signatures, which is 60% of the transaction. You just transmit the data necessary for, uh, for proving the transaction is committed by the miner, and you don't care about the signatures. Uh, and then we have much smoother screen upgrades, so whenever we want to fix a bug or introduce more capacity into the system, we just have a much more cleaner way to, to introduce new screen features. Uh, in terms of security, it's also smart, right? So it favors uh, complexity of the proofs of the witnesses over increasing the output side, right? So it's cheaper to actually get more security out, out of Bitcoin than to just put more uh, coins in. Uh, it has the amount of the uh, signature hash. It is great for security of the hardware wallets. And this is what I told you before, safe for a paid script hash. Just a bit longer hash. The and uh, finally, it is going to deploy the software uh, with extra backwards compatible network messages, and anyone can mix in one transaction both the old and new outputs. So it's very, very easy to integrate it. Uh, and everyone who is thinking about integrating it has 
very strong individual incentives to do so. This means they get a lot of like good stuff for free. And this means that more and more people will use it, it means everyone gets more requests. So in terms of just like long term, uh, we have uh, uh, we have now capabilities to do um, two two very nice improvements. Not in the like, upcoming related witness uh, implementation, but like it's next step. Right? So one thing is that we we'll lay foundation for complete fraud proofs for SPD clients. What does it mean? Uh, originally, Satoshi Nakamoto he envisioned that well, there will be some nodes that do full validation, but they will be like, big, <coughs> and there will be a bunch of light clients that will just trust those nodes to do the transactions. They will just require some complex uh, cryptographic proofs that transactions are included in the chain, but they will not actually check all the signatures. So this would be very great working if all those nodes were possible, to, uh, were capable of getting proofs that any kind of miner violates the rules. So imagine that we just trust the miners are behaving correctly, but if some miner created a block that has enough people working on this miner or thin air or test that then some other node can instantly send you a compact proof of this misbehavior. Then your application, even I saw, can quickly put it in this proof and say, oh, I didn't trust this block because here's a strong proof that this block is invalid. So, so far, we were able to create those proofs for like, almost all consensus rules, but not, not quite. Right? And so it's created with this lace foundation for doing extra, extra data in the witness that allows us to cover all consensus rules by uh, uh, by the blockchain structure, meaning that it will be much safer to be an SPD node, just trust the miners, be optimistic, and then just to rely on the, uh, on the property called censorship resistance, uh, meaning that somebody will tell you that there's a misbehavior. <coughs> and so, to create witness will allow us eventually to, to do that. So, more nodes will be quite confident, confidently use the uh, SPD functionality. Okay. Another thing is that we'll be able to introduce some extra scripting codes that uh, are pretty simple. And they, like some of them were even created in Bitcoin in the first place and not disabled for uh, like denial of service rules. But then we can safely reintroduce them back. It allows things like virtualized scripts. It means that you can have a smart contract that weighs like gigabytes, but you only need to reveal one branch of this contract that is necessary to trigger the spending. This is very cool. You can encode very complicated rules, cryptographically hash on a tree, and then take only the branch of this hash tree to prove and spend the coins. Right now, it's well, impossible given the like, coin limits and the lack of some operators. We can easily introduce them, and they will be produced and introduced. And this will mean that we can have proofs of any size. Well, uh, we'll have the like, contracts of any size, but the proofs will be very common. This is pretty great. Uh, and in one channel, we can do like, whatever we want. We can any scripts, we can do commitments to the so meaning that people can bootstrap nodes from the middle of the chain without needing to scan it. And we can even like, learn from how we have this extension block, so to speak, of the signatures. And we can say, why not handle the extension block for transactions as well? So we can say, we'll have like, another, another capacity on the side that will allow some people to want to have extra capacity to put the transactions there, have some smart commitments on the main block. So we will still not need to hard work the one megabyte limit, but have to put this 10 megabyte extension block on the side. If it's like safe and fun. Uh, and so segregated window system requires all sorts of solutions like that. And this is the end. I'd like to thank the developers who are actually responsible for all this stuff. Uh, primarily Peter Rubin and Gregory Maxwell and all the other. <coughs> and uh, now I'm going to answer any of your questions. Thank you.
convention, uh, you uh, uh, you have a lot of network nodes, right? they will be the rules. And uh, some of those rules allow you to create conditions that spend a way on. You just allow that. Because you can say, uh, I don't check the signature. I just possess it. Right? It's possible in the like, but nobody of course uses it because it's a group of the nation to the nation to the Now, what if miners say, okay, we will not consider it as a donation for us, but we will inter interpret this in a specific manner. And we will agree to actually enforce these rules on all the miners. So any miner who violates these rules will be forked off the chain. So this piece of data will actually have a meaning to have the condition. Now, so this is like easy. Now it becomes safe. Now, all the other nodes, they actually don't know about this rule yet. And so, if you create such a transaction, and it becomes valid in the blockchain, validated by the miners, other nodes will accept it because it's still, it's still valid. For the uh, so you don't break other nodes. <coughs> if you have a few other people who actually know about this new rule, they can accept payments from you this way. So they can see, okay, we're using this new rule, we know that miners enforce it, so it's safe for us to accept it. We know that miners will not be able to just double spend it or do all of that. And these are people, for instance, I will send this transaction to you. We don't need to worry about all the other people who are being this problem yet. We just do our business this way. We just need miners to enforce it. And to, to make it work, we need all these people to actually allow this transaction to happen, even if they don't know what's going on. This is why it's called anyone can spend. Because otherwise, it means they know something, they will restrict us. <coughs> Meaning that we cannot just put any kind of extra rules. <coughs> so this doesn't break any existing features, right? Because nobody uses this kind of power. And uh, one of the examples <coughs> that was used was a script hash that had a transaction that says, push some data that matches this hash, and it's set. So anyone can spend it. Just find the data, push, check the hash, no. But uh, the extra rule said, no, if we have a script with this problem, we should not just check the hash, but we should also interpret this data as a script, and then evaluate it and check what the result is. Right? So nobody was using the script before miners. And when they started forcing them, a lot of people used paper script hash to pack multi-sync transactions or whatever they do under, under this kind of script. It's, it's the address for number three. <coughs> and now just the function. So this is one of the examples of this. So uh, great talk so much. Um, so there's a few things. I, I, I had a chance to talk to Eric Lombroso recently about this and uh, thought it's a really interesting proposal. Now the the, um, the scaling part, I mean it's interesting, but it doesn't address the bandwidth issue because you still have that extra bandwidth for all the signatures that the miners are going to have to pass through the pipes. So I'm not sure if it, it really is a, a solution that could be considered a scaling solution. However, one thing that uh, I think I'd like to perhaps give more information on is the version bytes uh, proposal and how we can implement like more complex scripting uh, in, in transactions. More complex like theory and stuff, but they, 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 this would make it possible. So, like, your question is twofold about like, how, how this relates to the bandwidth problem? And no, no, it's just an, an observation, uh, okay. the bandwidth thing. But how, my question is uh, how do you think that the version by uh, proposal by Peter Wilma would allow for a theory and style? Scripting and okay. Because I think that's one of the most interesting things of this proposal is to open up scripting. Okay, so like Ethereum stuff is just I'm coming this for myself. It's just uh, it's sort of in the proposal. It's just like one of the ideas that I just put here so we can talk about. So um, uh, we need to observe that the this version byte, that one byte, allows you to spec. So we put any of this one. Then we can create it, right? So if we want to just introduce extra operators, we can do that. If we want to introduce like Turing completeness, we can do that. But it's just not enough to just want to do that. We need to make sure that it's safe and uh, scalable, etc. Et so what it means is that if we see that we have this kind of interesting source of smart contracts we want to support, 
maybe it's Ethereum that inspired us or some altcoin or just maybe actually see some real world scenarios that we can address. We can do that without cons any constraint on the existing scripting system whatsoever. So what, if you want the Ethereum kind of thing, that, uh, what you need is like, agents or contracts, right? And sending messages so you can create your own scripting language that says that those outputs actually have to uh, contain some messages sent to some to avoid those agents, right? And uh, the new node will relate those, keep track of some additional state, and then read this data for all these transactions. Transactions will be kind of uh, uh, like medium to send those messages in the Ethereum style. So I'm just showing how radically different it can be done without disrupting all the rest of the network. And just for the rest of the audience, this proposal, of course, doesn't fix the bandwidth problem uh, with the latency of the digital section. This is why it actually increases the capacity very conservatively, only to two, like up to two megabytes. Uh, because this is sort of what we can afford right now before we have better synchronization mechanisms. <coughs> so this is out of the scope of the, this proposal. But the proposal lays like, foundation for the next, you know, for maybe a Oh, did, did this your question? <coughs> Thanks. I'm sorry, I didn't know anything about Bitcoin before coming, but I don't understand why you're opposing security and the massive available Bitcoin. Like, uh, you're, you're trying to impose security and the massive Bitcoin, like the qu total quantity. I don't understand why. Uh, Oh, uh, I was not clear. So we're not talking about like number of uh, trans units. We're talking about like capacity of the transactions. So today we only have like, three transactions per second, right? And uh, if we allow, let's <coughs> we'll say, it's theoretically possible to put like three thousand transactions per second, it's a completely different picture for the whole network to validate those three transactions. So it's more like the, the number of transactions, uh -huh. the quantity of transaction per time unit. Uh -huh. It's more about that. <coughs> yeah. Okay. If I uh, send a SegWit transaction, uh, I have to to be sure that my uh, destinator accepts it because if he relies on an old node, he can say, "Okay, I didn't receive anything." Uh, Obviously, this is this is why you usually use payment protocol. So the recipient tells you where to send the money. Right? So it shows you the old script and you send the old script. Shows in the new script, uh, the new script. And what's interesting is that the recipient in the payment protocol can specify any script they want, give it to anyone, and your software doesn't care, it doesn't need to be upgraded to do this. Because to send money to this new script version, you uh, don't need to use segregated units at all. You need only to spend this new script to use segregated units. So, for instance, you have an old wallet and I have a new one, and I show you QR code with a script that says, this is the new script, please send money here. And your wallet has all the old coins and will put signatures in the old location and will send here and it will work. But then when I want to spend it, then I have to be compatible and take this wooden stuff and construct this new transaction structure and send it to that. So it's like my problem when I've seen it. So it can be, a, it can be a kind of issue because even if I uh, can upgrade to spend them, I can say I don't want uh, to upgrade and uh, I didn't receive a uh, real Bitcoin. But if you don't want to upgrade, it's not possible to, well, everything's possible, but then normally it will not happen because the recipient first has to tell where to send money. Mm -hmm. So they will be explicit about that. Their wallet will say, I only support the old style address, mm -hmm. or I will support new style address. They say this explicitly, it's not possible for you just to send to, like, I mean, if it's possible for you to send money to just some arbitrary address that you see it doesn't accept, then it's a problem with your software. Or you do Normally, you just like, take the address from me and you send it to whatever code. Right? Yeah? There you go. Like, I'm not sure I got, uh, what do you call it then, uh, segregated witness, as opposed to, for instance, segregated uh, signature? Okay, so... Uh, Seg sig, for instance, or, I mean, you know. Yeah, Seg sig. <laughs> so, so guys who are behind this, they're kind of 
academic thinking. And what the um, uh, what they put into the witness were not only the signatures, but any other kind of data that proves an authorized transaction. So signatures just one part of it. You can have some hashed secrets. Okay. You can have some can have some flags for traditionals. And also they leave room there for some extra commitments and extra flags that are outside of the scripting. So if, like in your script you can put arbitrary data that is not signatures. But also they leave room for extra commitments uh, for like future scalability improvements. So the whole thing is called witness. Because it's more uh, it's more generic. Yep. Uh, you said that you can use or like an old wallet to send money to a new wallet using a segregated witness. But what happens if you use a new wallet to send money to an old wallet? It's perfectly possible. It's perfectly possible. Yeah, because because uh, I probably have to show you. Let's, let's go to the Let's go to the uh, so this is the transaction, right? And so uh, if you spend this output, there will be a similar transaction here where the input links to the output. And conversely, you have a similar transaction in type where the input links, this input links to the, uh, uh, to the previous transaction output. Now, let's imagine that, let me just pause here. So let, let's say that this transaction is written by old bot sending money to a new one. Right? So the new world will tell you a new script, but all this stuff will be old. And so production will be about without any problem and it will be the network. Then let's imagine that this transaction is the new world, transaction is hanging to the old world. So these scripts will be old, but here the signatures must obey the rules of the new scripts. So they will be empty, and production must be accompanied by the extra real estate. So the new world uh, has to like, worry about this part to spend it. And this can be like a completely like old style of fashion. And the old world <coughs> similarly has only to care about this stuff to it. And they don't care about the scripts that you hear. Just single Is it clear? Or I can draw like some extra lines here. So, uh, yeah, let's say it's the old production. So this this will be new stuff. And otherwise, production is completely bad. So usually the legacy and because we reference this. <coughs> and it will work. Now, what if this is the new transaction sent to old scripts? So these are the old scripts that you don't really care. New old, old doesn't matter. But this part now references the new scripts, and so now we have to care. And this new wallet will do correct signatures, like empty signatures here, and the real signatures in some data structure. And they still don't care what happens here. So the, the, the only important uh, update happens on the input side. On the output field, we were. So yeah, old wallets can still send money to old wallets, like you join. Old wallets can send money to new wallets without any problem or security considerations. The, uh, and the payment protocol already is compatible with that, allows any options. The new wallets will be able to spend money to the old wallets and the new wallets, but they have to take care of their signatures because they use money to new screens. That's all. Does it does that same question? So again, you're going to be a lot of different nodes with different rules, and you should work together. Well, the rules will be. Uh, think of this as uh, all those software can produce kind of new steps, and whenever you transition to the next step, you usually implement all the previous steps. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. Know, I don't know, but you're gonna uh, many nodes with many different way to access the signatures, but. Uh, so on some nodes you're gonna have you're gonna have some script kind of script, and some other you're gonna have some other kind of script, and all these nodes are going to. No, no, no. The, the rules will be uh, uh, part of the consensus. So, like, version zero script is the same rule for 
all the nodes, right? Except that some nodes are not upgraded yet, and some nodes are already upgraded. But there is no, there is no notion of these nodes will use some version, these will use some other version now. Right? So it's a consensus on but it's smooth operation. Meaning that those people who haven't upgraded yet, they kind of just rely on the miners across the depth. So when they receive such transaction, they just say, okay, I don't know what's happening here. But I can only know that it's a soft fork, miners enforce it in some way, and I can either trust miners, or for instance, if I request a payment from you, I can say that, okay, in the chain of your transactions, I see some transactions with some new rules that I don't know about, I can either just trust miners, which is called like SPD downgrade. I kind of, I'm not a fool who they know it anymore because this stuff I trust the miners to correctly. Or I can say, you know what, I will just require more confirmations for this transaction. For instance, I usually require one confirmation for the internet or two, but for the uh, some unknown transaction, I say, okay, I will require like 10, just, just in case, so it's harder to attack me <coughs> until I have it. And this is, this is why it's interesting in terms of opt-out. So imagine you have a feature that increases capacity and I'm not yet capable of invading this extra capacity. So I can say, okay, I don't really think this. If I see such transactions in the chain, I just require more information, uh, number, more blocks. This means that people who try to attack me will be more and more, more expensive. Units. So, any more questions? So, uh, well, it's okay. You, uh, actually, feel free actually to ask any sort of like, uh, question, maybe not specifically related to simulation with us. But um, otherwise, I hope it was entertaining and interesting. And uh, thank you very much. Peut-être que certains d'entre vous ont des questions de manière plus générale sur Bitcoin. Tout le monde connaît eux. Tout le monde sait ce qui se passe. Tout le monde est opératif. Bitcoin, il y a la version 0.9, c'est ça Je ne sais pas. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 0.9. 
and quite volatile in all directions for quite a while until it like quits the world. So, or die. But anyway, until it becomes just a, a, an internet thing that just everywhere and everyone has yeah. such a increase and there's no kind of doubt about how it works, no increases. And then until then we will have all sorts of discussions on that. Yeah. I have a question, it's like, uh, could we get a kind of schism in the Bitcoin between uh, using those rules? We could have a parallel, maybe in a multiple parallel currencies existing simultaneously. Meaning, I mean, uh, creating a whole, a whole new cluster using the same rules, but uh, I mean, backing. Uh, well, yeah, you can have some kind of overall way of consensus rules to introduce some kind of. Yeah, there, is a, there is a platform called Open Assets which allows you to issue code plans. Yeah. So you can enforce this as a software as a part of the consensus rules, meaning that anyone can also rely on minus for the data, not just for the data, but for the size. This allows you to have uh, like native tokens, coin tokens, coexistent with the kinds of file use that people wish to with like Open Assets for the person. So if you have miners that have some support in the protocol itself, then it's just cleaner, more efficient, and supports more kind of lightweight clients uh, nicely. Because right now, open access actually requires to leave the whole chain of those colored coins transactions. Otherwise, you cannot know what it's going. Uh, so sure, this can be done if it's, if it's use useful and, and bring some serious value. It's probably not the first priority. And, uh, like, would it be technically possible to associate uh, an asset to uh, the, I mean, the sign uh, you have like, yeah, the signature and the text ID? Uh, well, the way, uh, probably it's more specific about open assets. Well, not open uh, assets, I mean, you, yeah, sorry. So an open assets asset is identifying the script. So if you have some multi-signature rule, then you can issue this asset only if you collect the signatures. Yeah, um, um, by asset, I mean out of uh, like the technical asset uh, behind the Bitcoin itself, like associating something such as a stock or uh, an actual asset from the real economy. Well, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So okay. if, you, if you have like real world issues, so you have company, you can just create some private keys and say that these public keys will be our asset, our stock, and only us will be able to. to and create those stocks so that people can use them. You can apply some legal structures if you want, or just trust them. Do whatever you want. Just as long as they are the issue. This is what is done by the open assets. Yeah, uh, about the scaling, because you hear a lot about Lightning Protocol, <coughs> what, what kind of opinion do you have? So maybe you get just for in one year. Okay, so Lightning Protocol is an uh, <coughs> interesting. No, 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 you are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lightning Protocol is uh, a way to create a lot of kind of simple payments, uh, not touching the blockchain. How it works? I mean, you have a bunch of transactions with different catalogs and superstitions between parties that are just kind of hang in the air, not committed to the blockchain, and they provide the security that the Payment will be done, will be settled correctly at the end of the day or at the end of the month or whatever the party decides. But once they create those transactions, they have a complicated mutual escrow relationship between the two parties. They can exchange payments and adjust those transactions safely without touching the blockchain. So what this means, in simple words, in simple terms, you don't get the freedom to do whatever stuff you want to do with scripts. So you can do simple payments from one point to another back and forth. And those can be payments as fast and as small as you want. It's just kind of weird. We can exchange email between each other. Well, emails are quite slow. Pink things, right? So this can be pink things. But we establish the transactions in the blockchain as a protection layer for us to respect the difference in the balances at the end. So this is called the payment channel. So I can like, open the payment channel and create this protected uh, transactions in the blockchain, make a bunch of payments, and then close it by committing the transactions to the blockchain and making sure that everyone is paid fairly. So Lightning takes this a little bit further and creates the multi hop payment channels that allow you to have a decentralized network where you can send a little bit of money through several hops to other people, which makes it more scalable than just opening channels for each party. So you can have a wallet that opens channels with like 10 of you, 
go to this guy and say, I want to pay for your something, for a service, right? And uh, you are not connected directly to me, and it will be wasteful for me to open this payment channel and you can actually see watching every time I click payment. It kind of notifies the whole thing. So instead, I will find a route to serve because if you have no payment <coughs> and transfer the coin to them, and these transfers will be just recorded between the uh, pairs of parties and not committed to the blockchain. And then every individual pair of parties can commit the difference of the blockchain around the world and pay the my fees and the way it costs. So this allows us to dramatically increase the amount of throughput for some simple things. Go to coffee, buy coffee, go to uh, some food joint, buy, buy a burrito without touching the blockchain. And unfortunately, it's like, this scheme is pretty nice, but the existing Bitcoin as it is uh, has a few flaws that prevents us using it like safely in next. And so segregated with this fixes almost all of them. And then there are some extra like, check one time verified uh, upgrades that introduce additional like, time blocking features that enable like. And so what it means is that we have a little bit of capacity on the Bitcoin proper, but then we also allow a much larger capacity for just simple small microwaves that are using lightning. So the, the uh, kind of my personal form of lightning network, I'm wondering how it will actually be deployed in terms of like final applications because we need to have this decentralized routing system. And I'm not sure how efficient it could be. But what's interesting is that anyone who wants to make a nice business and be a visa of Bitcoin can take the ideas of this like and create a centralized but trust minimized service that allows people to have like, micropayments in a safe manner through like with a, a huge uh, throughput, uh, taking the fee and guaranteeing that they're not holding money hostage. So people who develop Lightning Bone in some sense create a lot of R&D for some like, private companies to do some great like, end user centralized safe to use systems. That's what I think. Merci Joël. Euh, le prochain meetup, ce sera un format complètement différent parce qu'il y aura la présentation de, de start-up. Mais il vous manque encore euh, deux start-up pour pouvoir boucler le meetup. Donc si vous travaillez sur des projets, euh, vous connaissez des, des start-up qui viennent de se dans, dans le domaine, n'hésitez pas à me contacter euh, à la suite ou m'envoyer un message. Alors, on va mettre un peu de la bière, etc. pour que tout le monde puisse euh, échanger et discuter. Merci à tous les amis.